So this might be the most unique and most premium case that Deepcool has made. And what we have here is the Morpheus case from Deepcool. It's got a few tricks up its sleeve. Actually, scratch that, not just a few. It has a lot of tricks up its sleeve. And we're going to be discussing all of them. So before we proceed, the standard disclaimer, Deepcool did send us this unit for free for review. But they do not have a say in the content or the verdict for this review. So let's start with trick number one, the specs. It's an EATX case, which is quite big at 528 by 250 by 551 millimeters. And with a case this size, you'd expect that there's a lot of configurations and clearance support. But we'll get to that later. For front panel IOs, it's got four USB 3.0s, an audio jack, and a Gen 2 Type-C port. It has two 3.5-inch drive base and three for 2.5-inch drives. It has a whopping 9 slots for expansion. And speaking of expansion and configurations, it has a ton of fan support. At the front, you can mount three 120mm, three 140mm, we'll get to that in a bit, two 180mm fans, or two 200mm fans. Although there are fans already included at the, at the side, you can mount up to three 120mm or 140mm fans there. You can also amount the same amount of fans at the bottom. And if you're going to be using the PSU shroud, we'll get to that in a bit. You can mount three 120 or three 140mm. So for the rear as exhaust, you can either use a 120mm or a 140mm. For radiators, it supports basically everything at the front, top, side, and bottom. And for CPU air coolers, you can get up to 195mm or 132mm in height. We'll get to that later. <laughs> Maximum GPU length is 480mm. There is a PCIe 4.0 riser cable included in case you want to vertically mount the GPU. And for Power supplies, of course, it's an ATX at 180mm maximum. So basically, this case supports everything you can throw at it. You might have noticed that there are a few caveats there, and that's because of the nature of this case. Modularity is the name of the game here for this Morpheus case. Because actually, it's trick number two is that it is three cases in one. Unboxing this thing, you'd see, of course, the case. And there's a gigantic accessories box. It's gigantic because it does come with an interchangeable back panel. And that is how you can configure this to either be a single chamber or a dual chamber case. There is a secondary single chamber configuration here, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And that's basically why this is called the Morpheus, because it morphs. Of course, we've seen morphing or changing or transforming cases before. Cases like the Evolve Shift X from Fantex. But that transformation is more on the size, so that it can allow an AIO, for example. While this case changes its entire identity or form. And I don't think I've seen that before to this extent. Another example is, of course, the O11 Dynamic which you can basically invert stuff or change mounting options for the GPU. And something like the Fractal Terra where you can change the allocation for either the GPU or the cooler. But again, none of those are done to this extent. Let's talk about the forms. So out of the box, it comes like this. So this is your standard single chamber configuration where there's a PSU shroud. So if you change the back panel here, it goes to a secondary single chamber form by removing the PSU shroud at the bottom and then moving this bottom cover right here. So now you have a more open bottom here and then you mount the PSU at the top. And last but not the least, its final form is the dual chamber form. So you do this by replacing the back panel and configuring the internal panels so that the dual chamber configuration is achieved. So we've all seen dual chamber cases before, but it's not going for that fish tank look as the front panel is still a mesh panel and not all glass. But you get all the benefits and all the looks of a dual chamber case. And for me personally, as well as our techs here, this is our favorite configuration for this case. So trick number, I've lost count. For the included fans, technically it just includes one fan because this has a singular 420 millimeter triple fan. Like I don't even know what to call it. So it's basically three fans in one and you can put it at the side vents. And with all its modular features, you can also put a 420 millimeter at that mounting point. It's such a unique fan setup and it just goes to show the creativity and the enthusiasm that Deepcool is 
gunning for here with this case. So with that 420mm monster pan, if it's not obvious yet, this case is all about the airflow. All of its panels, the front panels, the side panels, the back panels, even the ones that's right across the motherboard at the back, even the PSU shroud, all of them have mesh or some sort of vent out there as if daring you to use your 14900K and 1490 GPUs and try to see if they will overheat. So another trick is the stats monitoring thingy. Just an LED display, not the screen type. And once configured correctly in DeepCool's own software, it will display CPU and GPU temps as well as usage. While it's not one of those advanced displays that we're used to seeing in AIOs and other screens, Personally, I like the aesthetics of it. The look blends well with the design choice of this case. And frankly, it's quite useful for what it is. So it's powered via the motherboard. You can control how and what it displays via the software from DeepCool. And for its last trick, it has bits. We've mentioned this with our CC360 case review. And we talk about the aesthetic choices and the visual rebranding of DeepCool basically. They're all about this square pixel aesthetic and that's how they've designed the mesh panels. So just for fun, DeepCool included these rubber bits that you can stick onto those vents and you can make all sorts of designs according to your taste. So if you'll see here, this is what we made. It's the logo of DeepCool and Harvey Sugar, of course. And they've got plenty more of those bits so you can make any design you want. So you can put your designs up here at the front or at the top. There's also some points at the back and also some inside the PSU shroud if you're going to use it. So finally, how do I even review this thing? If I review it for its function, you know, it's a PC case. And if I review it as such, I'd say that it's a very solid case. It was a ton of fun building in it. But having that mindset kind of does this thing a disservice because this is something very special. So it's like reviewing a Porsche sports car for its merits under the context of transportation. While yes, of course, it's going to take you from point A to point B, this is a high-end premium enthusiast level case. And I do think that this is targeted primarily towards tinkerers. You know, people who enjoy building the PC more than using it. Of course, used as a case, this is an excellent solid choice. We haven't even talked about the inner features yet. There's a GPU sag bracket already installed there. The mounting points are solid. All the panels are well built and its modularity is not super convoluted. And I'd say that it's not even gimmicky. There is an actual use for all its forms. And this is a perfect match for PC owners who love building. You know, people who call themselves hobbyists. Like, of course, it's not a perfect case. This has a couple of negative points in it. Like, for example, the single chamber configuration number two. It's very hard to cable manage in that configuration, especially the PSU cables. Since the PSU is mounted at the front, where all the cables are sticking out, where it's very hard not to be seen. It's very possible, though, that we weren't just super creative with it. So comment down below if you have a good way of cable managing the PSU cables for single chamber configuration number two. Another thing that is negative for it, depending on who you are, is that it's really big. This is a heavy case. This is an E80X case, of course. And of course, while this can fit a lot of configurations, all the space here will be wasted with consumer level components. So with a case like this, you want the top of the line motherboard, gigantic GPUs, as well as gigantic coolers, as well as gigantic radiators or AIOs to cool your top of the line CPU. And anything lower than that will make this case super overkill. This is going to be perfect, however, for those top of the line high-end components with custom looping in mind. We've actually recently had a custom order for an ROG motherboard that has a built-in routing for custom liquid cooling. So that's the systems that this case is meant for. So I wouldn't call that a negative, it's just a caveat or basically a recommendation for what system should go in here. But all in all, this is a very special case. So of course, with that having said, it's no surprise that the pricing for this is apt for those high-end builds. This is not a cheap case. And of course, that's because of the amazing engineering that went into this case. The outstanding quality that they were able to achieve with all the features that this thing has. It's an amazing special case and I'm happy that this thing exists. Recently, the case market have been very stale lately with all the fish tank builds, all the refreshes, all the copycats out there. But once in a blue moon, one of these manufacturers will pull off something like this. Thank you for watching.